Welcome everyone <laughs> to the November Community Lunch Hour with the Community Foundation of Central Wisconsin. I'm Jenny Riggenbach, CEO here at the Community Foundation. Um, and before I introduce my guests, we're so excited about this um, Community Lunch Hour. I wanted to just take a minute to thank our sponsors who help us bring the Community Lunch Hour and so much more community engagement um, forward into the community. And that would be our long-term sponsors, Delta Dental and Century Insurance, and our newer sponsors, Mid-State Technical College and the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point. So we thank you all um, for that commitment to us. Um, so now I'd like to just take another minute to, um, to talk about how you can get engaged in this conversation. Um, as we get moved forward and we meet Kyle and Lainey DeMars and we hear from Ryan and we really start to explore this new YMCA in Washera County, I am sure you're gonna have questions and ideas that you're gonna wanna um, participate in this conversation. So when you do, you can um, chat something in the chat. Kai Ying is gonna, is gonna look at that. You can also um, raise a hand and Kai Ying is gonna be helping me watch for raised hands to get you into the conversation. Um, we're also gonna pause every once in a while so that um, we can have more of that dialogue. So if you feel like you wanna hold off um, and wait for those moments, um, you absolutely can do that too. Um, okay, let me just... Of course, you know, all best plans. And now my computer is not, is hiding the screen. So I'm just gonna leave the screen up for a minute. Um, sorry about that. I'm gonna see if I can move this. Well, while we get, while we introduce our guests. So um, we have Kyle and Lainey DeMars with us and they have the DeMars Family Fund here at the Community Foundation. And we have Ryan Zietlow with us who is the CEO of the Stevens Point Area YMCA. Um, basically, this is the group, if you will, that um, did a lot of early work and community engagement to um, realize this really exciting new addition to Washera County. So before we um, really get to the details, I wanted to invite Kyle and Lainey to tell us about themselves, how they got here, and what was, you know, just tell us about your journey and why this project means so much to you. <laughs> okay, so we moved to Watoma about 2017, and we bought a business here in town. Um, it was an agricultural, like, implement supply, basically, and we um, we sold it in 22. So when we sold it, we knew we wanted to give back to the Washer community. We weren't exactly sure how. Um, which is when we met with the community foundation and Jenny and Marley, and they really helped us kind of figure out where we wanted to stick money to have the greatest impact. So we were able to tour a bunch of different places, some, some wise, the boys and girls club, um, a community center model. Um, and after looking at the Adams County and the Wisconsin Rapids YMCA, we really determined like that was going to be the biggest bang for the buck in our community is going to impact the most people from childcare ages. So like, you know, zero years old to a hundred years old, everybody, there's something for everybody at the Y, right? So that's kind of it. And in the community now we're, we're involved in a few different things, um, volunteering at the school and, and other community stuff. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, thanks, Lainey, for speaking for both you and Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll hear from Kyle in a little bit. But it is such a great story of just, you know, your family um, having such an, you know, being able to benefit from the community and then wanting to give back. These are stories we hear so often at the foundation. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and thank you for being so generous. So Ryan, so this was just kind of a, a serendipitous moment too with you joining the, the YMCA in Stevens Point. Do you wanna tell us a little bit about your journey and um, and how how this connection came to be from your lens? Yeah, uh, I had the opportunity to come down to Stevens Point uh, in fall of 2022, uh, served in YMCAs across the state uh, prior to that, uh, but central Wisconsin roots. So I uh, grew up, graduated high school in Wapaka, uh, family had dairy farms in Iowa, Scandinavia area, and then uh, went to UWSP. So my wife, Amy, and I always wanted to get back to central Wisconsin and be around uh, family, be able to raise our kids around grandparents. 
Uh, so that was kind of what brought us back here. And uh, through that process, it was the opportunity to meet with Kyle and Laney um, and Jenny about uh, the really the impact that Kyle and Laney wanted to make back into their community. So, um, you know, I, I, when we look at it, uh, the way that it works with the why is that, you know, a small rural community can't just say we're going to create a why. Uh, there needs to be a process and a, a path in place of aligning with another YMCA that can help support that. Uh, both short term and long term uh, to make sure that it's sustainable in that in that path. So uh, the Stevens Point Y has uh, been engaged with uh, Kyle and Laney and the foundation since really that early 2023 time frame uh, in work to get to this. And we're extremely excited that uh, what we've been able to accomplish up to this point is uh, is a uh, as I told a group at the ADRC in Washera County, you know, their YMCA, their YMCA is coming to uh, Washera County. Um, and uh, not only with that beginning portion, but also some exciting things about how we may look at the future and, and the greater impact as we continue to grow. Awesome. So we, we started to talk about 2023 and we're in 2024 on the verge of 25. So um, do you want to talk a little bit about what the what the construction and grand opening timeline um, looks like? And I'll share share that timeline here. Yeah, I'll start in 2023 because um, projects and in, in, uh, impacts like this don't happen overnight. They take a little bit of time and there's a lot of behind the scenes work in that. Uh, so in 2023, there was, you know, Kyle and Laney with the vision. What did they want to try to accomplish and what was the impact they wanted to make? Uh, and what really vehicle would they utilize in order to make that possible? Um, when the YMCA got involved, we want to understand Washera County community needs. Uh, so we asked the Community Foundation to stand alongside us and really facilitate a community needs assessment. They went out and asked Washera County what was most critical in the community that may fit with the why, or we could have learned at that point that it didn't make sense for it to be a why. Uh, based on the community needs. So we really saw that uh, needs in childcare, needs in aging populations, family uh, unit engagement, um, you know, and in and, and support of youth and teens really fits the mission of the YMCA. So we're extremely excited to hear that and knew it was the next step for us. The next piece is, is just because you can raise the dollars, can you support the facility long term? So we worked with a third party to do a feasibility study to understand what was going to be the engagement and the connection and the relationships that could be built uh, with the Washera Community YMCA that would allow us to be sustainable from an operating model and a business perspective long term. So those are really milestones and benchmarks for us. We needed to accomplish to say, okay, let's go uh, and, and take this step and this leap uh, forward. So uh, that's when the Stevens Point Y board said, you know what, this makes sense. The community need uh, fits with our mission. The feasibility looks like uh, it's going to be successful and we can continue to sustain for generations uh, this work. So we'll move forward with that. We know that we were led uh, with Kyle Laney's uh, extremely generous lead gift that really is the catalyst of all of this being able to happen. And we're extremely appreciative for that. But when we look at the overall scope, we're looking at about a $10 million project in phase one. So we know that $4 million is a lot of money to everybody in the room. It still doesn't get us to the finish line. So we're going to have to be creative on how are we able to accomplish that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that capital stack um, exactly what that looks like uh, in the future. But through that process in 2024, uh, we were um, blessed to have the, the support of the Otto Bremer Foundation, which is coming out of uh, Minnesota in the Twin Cities. And uh, recently in our partnership with the City of Wachtoma, flexible uh, facility program grants uh, to the tune of 4.25 million. That closed the gap on phase one and made the Washera County Y real. There is no turning back. It is a real process and a real place that is going to show impact for generations uh, moving forward in that. Hey, Ryan, before we move on, um, I'm hoping Lainey and Kyle can tell us a little bit more about the committee um, that they pulled together and even Jessica's role in writing some of those grants as a volunteer. Um, do you mind sharing a little bit there? We can celebrate those folks a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, yep. We had a we had a group of probably eight to ten people that we started early on with, and um, yeah, certainly Jessica Bielmeyer, um, who was has uh, just great experience in in grant writing, and was with Rawhide and in, in um, 
does that as a, you know, has her own business doing that and has put a ton of pro bono work into our, our team and our initiative to help do that and has been, has been awesome um, in helping us get um, both of those grants Ryan, Ryan mentioned, and uh, just a number of community members as well that, um, that have gone out and reached out you know, quietly and helped raise um, um, over six digits and other other funds that have helped um, um, for the project. So it's been a been uh, been great. Yeah, idea generation and and fundraising behind the scenes for for a while for yep. about a year. Great. Mm -hmm. And like Ryan said, we'll talk a little bit more what goes into that, what's gone into that whole stack in a little bit, but, but that was such an important role and we're, we're really glad some of them were able to join us today too. Um, all right. Well, let's talk, let's go back to that. You know, we're still in 2024. I know over the last year, there's been a lot of conversation about location. Um, mm -hmm. Ryan, do you want to share with us um, a little bit on that timeline and, and, and when we can expect the grand opening to be? Yeah. Um, we have great partners in this. When it comes to it, really municipalities and uh, in, in local organizations are critical to the support and the success of something like this. We have the city of Watoma, uh, tremendous partner, um, both from a, a financial support piece um, of uh, some opportunity there, but then also the grant uh, recipient on the flexible facilities grant. So city of Watoma, phenomenal partner. Um, and then Washera County has been a great uh, advocate for this project. Um, we engaged with them early on about looking at the old courthouse location. So at the new government center, the old courthouse was there. Uh, I believe Washera County did everything they could about looking at due diligence and how do we potentially save the old courthouse, which I know is important for that community. Um, the YMCA also as well worked with a number of different partners to look at what is the renovation opportunity and can we revitalize the old courthouse? Um, I mentioned before that our project in phase one is about a $10 million project. Um, we first started with the first rendition was over 30 million in order to renovate it to become a Y. Even trying to sharpen the pencils, it came over 16. So we looked that it just wasn't feasible to save the old courthouse. But that location is a picture perfect location to serve Washera County. It's centralized uh, in, in the area. It's in a high population area for Washera County. Kids can walk from schools, it's close to families and convenience, um, and it really is a phenomenal place in downtown Watoma that will be able to serve um, that entire region as we move forward. So um, we have selected an architect uh, and we will begin to work on the design piece and finalize what the actual design and programming aspects amongst the Y will look at. As part of this uh, grant, it has created a little bit of a, a challenge, which is good challenge, on our timing. Um, we need to uh, begin construction by July 1st of 2025, no later than. That means that we will be starting uh, the build process um, by July. So maybe a little bit sooner, maybe right on that day, but that's when we would uh, see that happening. We anticipate about a 12 to 13 month construction process. Could be a little bit longer depending on weather, of course, in Wisconsin. So we always have to, to take that into consideration. Uh, but we should see by late summer at latest in 2020. Six uh, that we will be doing uh, the grand opening of the Washera Community YMCA. So there's a lot that happens between July 1st, 2025 and August of 2026. Um, and as you see, uh, Jenny, what you have on the screen, uh, you know, it's everything from all the approvals and behind the scenes pieces with the architects and the construction manager to beginning the hiring process as we get uh, closer to shovels going in the ground and program development and building partnerships that we have there. Uh, and all of those pieces that uh, will take place between now and then. Awesome. And that grant you're talking about is the Flexible Facilities Grant that um, came through the state to the city um, to support this project, right? There's some strict timelines with that. That's the grant with the strict timelines. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a, a federal... Uh, federal dollars that was left over from from some of that rescue act um, funding so it was given out to the state um, and then so that but needed to be um, uh, not for profits were not able to apply for that but as a sub recipient through the city so in addition to the city the city had already uh, committed 500,000 to the project that they had in uh, excess um, in reserves, so nothing they had to go out to bond or raise taxes on. Um, they had done well 
with some of that other funding opportunities through the, all that ARPA funding that came through, they had they had taken uh, did a good job of taking advantage of those programs and they had a had a reserve fund. So in addition to their five hundred thousand, they they also were the ones that we wrote the grant through. So they've been they've been awesome to work with. It takes partnership, that's for sure. That's for sure. Um, and so before we start talking about the amenities and pieces that go in that are going to be part of phase one, just want to confirm on in, you know, there will be some hiring done, right, Ryan, that um, there'll be opportunities for jobs um, at, um, associated with this new project, too. Yeah, and you know, some of that will happen and, and be finalized on what those positions are based on the programming kind of finalization that happens in there. But if you look at it, um, we'll talk about the amenities and, uh, you know, child care. Um, that's a significant importance for workforce in, in economic development in Washer County. Um, and it'd be an important part of the why as we look at our phase one piece um, and uh, when we look at other support mechanisms. So that will begin as kind of construction begins so that we can start to bring on leadership, uh, local leadership for the walk, uh, share a community YMCA, and then continue to build the program hiring as it, it, we get closer and closer to opening. Great. All right. Well, let's talk about a little bit about what this is going to look like, this brand new building right downtown. I can just imagine all the downtown shop owners and restaurants are just thrilled about this too, this location. Um, can you want to tell us what we're looking at here, Ryan? Yeah, and I'm going to preface that we still have design work to do, so this could look completely different, but it, at least it's the conceptual piece and in the basis of what will be but please don't, if you walk in on day one, say this looks nothing like what Ryan showed us in on November 13th. <laughs> Please don't hold me to that. So many things can change between now and the day that shell is going to ground. So what you're looking at here is really kind of the, the front entrance of what uh, our why may look like um, in there. On the right hand side, you see the licensed child care. So um, we will see a licensed child care for about 50 children. So birth to five in early childhood education. Uh, as we talked about, that will support uh, that workforce development. Um, continued conversations with the school district about how do we uh, support the 4K program, um, whether it's wraparound care for 4K uh, or eventually looking at site sharing in some perspective. I think it, you know, the partnership opportunity continues to exist in how we address that. But we know that it's a child care desert and uh, that will be important for us as we move forward. So this is if you walk into the Y, um, you will see that our uh, welcome center will be there. So this is kind of the face of what you walk into in the first portion. You would have secure child care that would be located there. Um, and then some sort of a drop in child care, similar to what we have in pretty much every Y um, that we see there. So drop in uh, for parents and for families to be able to utilize, to drink a uh, cup of coffee in the lobby or, um, you know, potentially engage with friends or work on their own healthy living. Um, similar to the uh, Parents Morning Out program that we do with the um, uh, Community Foundation currently in support of that program. So as we move forward. Awesome. So over here, this is a secure child care, which will be 50 licensed spots. Um, mm -hmm. And really, am I, am I correct? This is going to be the very first licensed center in what Washera County? Um, I believe Red Granite has a licensed facility. Oh, okay. I think there's a group licensed facility in, in Red Granite. So we can't take that we would be the only one, but um, definitely, you know, that doesn't meet the capacity. So this will support that program and convenience for a lot of families that either live um, or work in Watoma being kind of the county seat of Washera County. Got it. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. And then over on the left-hand side, in in theory, there's also the drop-in childcare. So if you want to go work out, or I think when you mentioned the partnership um, that we have with the Stevens Point Y, that's really allows parents who might need to go grocery shopping without their toddler for once, right? They can actually leave the facility. Am I right about describing yep. that correctly? You are, yes. Yeah. 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 So that's that's a you know has strong possibility too um, of, of some yeah. amenities there. All right. Well. What about, what about, so this is a picture of the gym with a track around it. And this is something that you're seeing in a lot of wise, correct? 
Yeah, you're looking at a high bay gymnasium with a walking track. I'll talk about the high bay, uh, bay gymnasium first. You know, when we look at youth recreation, when we look at adult recreation and opportunities, especially in, in northern climates, uh, opens up a lot of possibilities. I was walking into the Washera County Courthouse the other day, and the deputy who was working the scanner as I was walking in says, hey, as long as you're talking about the why, I have an idea for you to keep in mind. So in his thought is, is there's a lot of recreation around softball and baseball in Washera County, and it is a very long way for any of them to go for any sort of a batting cage. You know, so simple feedback like that as we get, could we have some drop down batting cages that could allow youth teams to come in and use this space in the wintertime or in the off season in there. So um, when we look at it, uh, we'll have some is uh, group exercise rooms, but if we look here in the Stevens Point Y, some of our senior classes uh, for our senior population actually take place in the gym because they are too large for group exercise rooms. Just the other day, we had 71 uh, seniors in a senior class here in the Stevens Point Y, which utilizes our gym. And they have a little bit of an argument with our pickleball group because uh, they both want all the space. Um, but it can be utilized in a multitude of different ways um, in the walking track. I, you know, that is one of the most requested items that we get in YMCA's is a walking track, not only for the health purposes of walking and at year round, but for the socialization and the time spent with others, it happens when they're doing that activity. And uh, that I think is the most important um, as we look at it. That's, you, you know, it's, it's, I love the story of someone coming with ideas, right? It, I had a board member of the community foundation recently say to me, you know, once something is there, I can just imagine all of the ideas and curiosity and like evolution of the why that'll happen. Um, but one of the stories I love the most, and I'm hoping Kyle can tell it, because I think this is what sort of drove so much of our, um, of our visits is just what a gym can mean to a family. Yeah, I think just the ability to, uh, you know, you you work all week, right? And and uh, you have all your activities after school, and you finally get to get to a weekend, and you have the opportunity to just go shoot baskets or hang out with your family. I think that 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 was one of the things when we moved here. We you know we um, loved the community, but that was just something that we we felt was missing, and and we just have always in in other wise and other communities we lived in just felt that that was such a great thing for the, the family to be able to go and connect and, and spend that time together. Well, and I got to tell you, Kyle, um, and Lainey too, you know, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but just the synergy that happens when donors with the lived experience bring their idea so that forward with an organization and that the realities of what families need don't get lost right because um in in the vision for this so um so yes thanks for sharing that um okay let's go so oh let's talk about this this one this is exciting too i know when we went to visit a one why um i was blown away with how this open concept of wellness um was just so evident Ky ryan do you want to tell us what we see here yeah, so in this in this concept, and it, it could change, but this is a second floor wellness space. So kind of your strength equipment and your cardio equipment and, and pieces. And you can see a little bit of how the walking track will um, kind of go around the entire facility. You have an overlook of the lobby, which creates that energy and kind of that feel as you walk in um, as we move in here. So I always say, though, that this this piece of stuff that you see, the equipment, this is the byproduct of really what the why is. It's the exercise portion. When you really start to engage with the why and you come and talk to the members, it isn't so much about the, the, the outcome of the wellness. It's about the outcome of the social connections that are built uh, in a YMCA. So, um, you know, we build small communities all around. And, you know, this is one of those pieces that uh, people often see as important for a why. Uh, and, of course, we'll be in our Watch Air Community YMCA. That's such a great point. I can't tell you, Ryan, how many conversations I have while on the elliptical with people um, just, you know, wanting to catch up. Um, it is. It's it's fun. Um, it's a really fun aspect of the why for sure. Um, so then what do this is uh, still, again, uh, renderings, correct? 
Um, yeah, so these are conceptual. Plan. So, you know, expect changes as we go through the design process. Uh, but kind of the lavender, the light purple on the on the kind of um, right hand side, that's the mm -hmm. licensed child care. So that'll be the licensed child care piece. It'll be secured off with the outdoor playground that connects right into it that we would see. Um, and then when you come into the lobby and you look at the kind of the yellow portion, the lounge, that's really a gathering space and a place for people to connect. So, um, you know, what I envision is seeing what I see in YMCA's as we go there, you see uh, our seniors and adults having coffee in the morning, you see moms or dads that have their kids in drop in that are engaging in conversation or those pieces, um, as we see. Um, part of this also, um, you can see in that there's something that's called a wellness room, that there'll be um, digital connectivity as part of our flexible facility grant uh, that will also allow for um, telehealth uh, medical services. So continue to work on building partnerships uh, and members of the community can come in at no charge and, and work through medical appointments. So let's say they don't have broadband access where they live. Um, and telehealth is easier to get connected with providers in rural communities, that that'll be a portion that's available um, as we move forward. So we'll have small meeting room, community room that could be used um, for YMCA programs, lunch and learns with our seniors uh, or other ways. Um, yesterday in the ADRC, we were asked the question, would there be meeting space for other community groups? And we said, most certainly, um, looking at other nonprofits and other organizations, having a space where they could connect and have meetings uh, right within the YMCA is something that this will be uh, available for as well. Um, we talked about the drop-in childcare and as well as kind of group exercise space, which would really be flexible. So it could be a group exercise class. Uh, it could be uh, another purpose during the day. So trying to keep things in our, our square footage as flexible and multi-purpose uh, as we possibly can. So, And then there will be, um, this is then that, that upper level that mm -hmm. you talked about. Correct. Yep. Great. All right, well, let's pause here and open it up for some questions. I'm just gonna stop sharing so I can see everyone. Oh, I see Jennifer Culver is excited in the chat. Thanks, Jennifer, for joining us today. Um, what questions do folks have? We have any hands raised, Hying? I don't see any. Um, I don't see any either, but let me Hi. see. I do. Uh, yeah, I saw what Jennifer wrote in the chat. Um, yep. All right. Well, we'll keep going. Um, and if you have and we did a really good job at uh, kind of laying things <laughs> or... <laughs> I think so. I think you're doing a great job. All right. Let's, I'm going to share my screen again. Um. So yeah, let's talk about leadership. So I know one of the things we wanted to just give everybody an understanding of, of um, who at the Stevens Point Area YMCA that's chartering this, this facility um, is charged with sort of keeping this on track. Like this is gonna be a fast moving machine over the next two years. Um, who Can you tell us a little bit about the building committee, Ryan? Yeah, and it, you know, you mentioned it. This is this is this is a fast track to go from now until July first on groundbreaking means we got to stay on point. Uh, we have to make sure we hit our timelines. We have to have the right partners alongside of us in there. You know, we're blessed that really the partners we'll have is the city of Watoma, Washer County, um, MSA, who's helping with grant administration. Um, we have new market tax credits. We'll talk about in the capital stack. Um, as well as our architect and eventually our, our construction uh, manager. So all of those have to go through and really the group that drives it will be our building committee will drive this portion of the process. So Eric Carlson, who many of you probably know, uh, president at Ellis Construction, uh, is our committee chair. So he chairs uh, the work that we do um, in that. Uh, Fred Sherrill, uh, Team Sherrill Companies, sits on our building committee uh, Mike Truszynski, so uh, Delta Dental Wisconsin Facilities Director, uh, Ross Rettler from the Rettler Corp, as we know, and then Dan Mahoney, um, who's not on this, but also uh, retired from the Village of Plover, um, is our board chair and uh, comes to every committee meeting uh, anyways in there. So when it looks at it, this group um, is really the ones that will drive that forward. Uh, two of the pieces that we'll continue to add to as we move forward with uh, will be Washera County representation. 
uh, as we move forward. So Kyle uh, and Laney are very involved at this point. But even through a board governance perspective, as the why comes on board about having that representation and that local voice um, to our YMCA, because it's no longer the Stevens Point YMCA, we'll have to come up with a new name eventually, once we have both of them uh, online, uh, but uh, it will be um, important for that, that voice. So, but this group is really driving what that process looks like. Great, thanks very much. Um, that's great. And we do have a question um, from Cassidy. She's watching with her coworkers, and we're wondering if Park Street will be gone, where the pool will be for phase two. And I know we haven't gotten to conversation yet about phase two, but do you want to address the question about Park Street? Yeah, Park Street will be vacated. Um, so uh, both the courthouse and the annex are coming down. So those will both be taken down. Um, in there. So exactly the layout of the pool, that's a little bit on the site design that we need to figure. You know, in reality, the, the old Oshera County courthouse location is a little tight. We're going to have to be very efficient with the use of the site layout um, when it comes to that. So we don't know exactly where the pool is going to go, but that will come soon. When it comes to timing, we really should have some very good site layout uh, conceptual plans uh, by late January, I would say, we, we would really have a very strong picture about what that's going to look like uh, in that time frame. So, um, Cassie, we don't know exactly where it's going to be, but we have that whole. Yeah, this, the city, um, the city is also working on a um, looking to do a project as well to try to create some space uh, adjacent to this for for kind of the, the the markets and some of the activities that they do. So we'll be working with the city on that as well to make sure that we um, we try to, you know, we, there's been talk of even trying to have a little, you know, could you do the music in the park or something like that down there? So, um, the city is looking at, at, at what they can do in that area as well. So that will, we will work with them to kind of position the facility on the campus to try to serve the, the greater good down there. So it should be hopefully pretty cool by the time it's, by the time it's done. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Great question, Cassidy. Well, let's talk, we've, we've referenced it a few times. What is, the, what is the financing package or the capital stack that has come together in a very collaborative way to make this phase a reality? Um, so we've got three sort of basic tiers to this public and private grants. And um, I know you both, you know, Kyle and Ryan both talked about that a little bit, but I'd love for you to go into a little bit more around, you know, um, you know, the sources of that and why it's so important to a community like um, Watoma and Washera County, the private donations, and then the new market tax credits and what exactly that is. So why don't we start start at the bottom and kind of work our way up. Um, uh, Kyle, do you want to talk a little bit more about the, the flexible facilities and that partnership with the city? Yeah, I think we we covered that a little bit. Um, basically, it was a, um, um, a a round of funding that came, and Ryan, was that was that uh, summer that that came across, or was it late spring? Yeah, it was late spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it it was uh, the state of Wisconsin basically got additional funding from from the federal government, and um, the the governor. Uh, made the decision to basically dole that out to the municipalities um, instead of kind of absorbing that into state programs. And so they, the state, the Department of Administration put a competitive grant program um, with a bunch of, you know, uh, a list of of objectives. So you could you could uh, apply and, and with your project illustrate that you truly met those objectives for um, for what they were trying to accomplish. And we were able to do that, and um, and we were blown away. Um, Ryan says he thought we had a ten percent chance at that grant. I thought we had a zero percent chance at that grant. Um, and uh, so I think the fact that we did have the concepts, we did have a lot of work. And one of the requirements was you had to have um, half of the funds already raised. So we were in a good position. I, I think. The quick nature of that, there were a lot of, um, I think there were over 300 applications and over 300 million um, or close to 300 million 
in requests for the hundred million that was that was given to Wisconsin from the federal uh, program, and so it was very competitive, and we were we were blessed um, blessed to win that. And again, one more one more good thank you to Jessica for writing such a great grant. So thanks for that. It's a lot of yep. hard work. Um, and then Ryan, do you want to talk a little bit about Otto Bremer? And I think that's a great segue into the private donation side. Yeah, Otto Bremer is a, a large trust and foundation. It comes out of uh, out of the Twin Cities um, in there. So when we look at that, uh, it, it is a highly competitive um, grant to get into. So Jessica did a very nice job in, in teeing us up and getting us connected with Lou Hare, um, their director of philanthropy through Otto Bremer. Um, and then through that, uh, we had a great conversation and, and sit down virtually with Kyle and Laney, myself and Jessica and Lou to really just talk a little bit more about what the vision was in, uh, in this Washera County uh, project as we look forward through that. So there was probably about six hours of additional meetings that we that that I worked personally with Lou to try to walk through this and answer questions and and get him comfortable with it because really at the end of the day it was Lou that had to pitch it to the trustees of Otto Bremer, um, and uh, you know we're grateful uh, Lou went to bat for us I think and they saw the rural nature which really Otto Bremer uh, Trust really believes in in rural projects. Uh, in the areas that they serve. So a $300,000 grant uh, to the Washera Community YMCA. So it was a great addition to our Y. It allowed us to leverage those dollars to some other uh, pieces as we looked in um, uh, future grant opportunities, et cetera. Great. And that that match requirement from Otto Brummer was really covered by the private donations from the Demars and a few others. Um, Lainey, do you, can you remind me about where those um, other donations, if the are those public? Those donations that came in, Ryan, are they public? Um, I don't know. We'll, know. we'll make sure they get recognized at some yeah. point. Yeah, we'll keep going. Yeah. All right, great. I, I know one of them is. I know one of them is for sure, but I don't know about the other one. Okay, well, let's it, we'll, yeah. we'll come back to that at some yeah. point. I'm sure they'll get recognized. Yeah. But let's talk about new market tax credits because this is a get. This is something else that can be really foreign to most people, but it really takes the bottom two tiers to make that make that a reality. Ryan, can you tell us about the new market tax credit? Yeah, I'll try to simplify it um, because there's a lot of attorneys that eventually get involved in the process. New market tax credits uh, is a way for for-profit companies and investors to invest in, in uh, projects in communities. So when we look at it, an investor can look to uh, buy into a project. They get a tax benefit as a for-profit company for investing in this. Um, but a portion of the uh, investment goes directly to the project. So the total is about 39%. Um, so for us, when we look at it, we look at phase one being a $10 million project, 39% um, is the tax benefit total throughout the plan. The nonprofit organization that is on the ground floor gets about a 20 to 22% benefit of that. So with us, with a $10 million project, there's about $2.1 million that's going to come to the Washera Community YMCA uh, through new market tax credits. So when we look at it, it's a highly competitive um, avenue of funding for projects. So a couple things that are necessary um, to increase your chances is one, you have to be in a community that's identified as being severely distressed. So we don't want to always use that term and make people feel bad, but that's how it's classified is you have to find an area that's severely distressed. So for us, the courthouse location was critical for us to be able to realize new market tax credits. If we would have went three miles to the east or four miles to the north, we would have exited that area. New market tax credits may not have been something that's possible for us uh, in there. Um, so that and then also, what are you trying to accomplish and what's the impact on the community going to be? For us, childcare was a critical component about seeing having investors see the importance of the project and how it was going to make a difference uh, to the community um, overall. So when we look at it in, in simple terms, for-profit investors invest in nonprofit projects that are going to make an impact in communities. We just so happen to be in a rural community, severely distressed that has programs that work with the aging population and childcare that really sings the message of what this looks like. 
It also creates timing challenges for us because we need to start putting things in place to know when we're going to be closing our new market tax credits. We have to have the full amount of funding up front, which means some bridge financing is ne uh, necessary in order to bridge the gap about even through the transaction time frame. And the flexible facilities being a reimbursed grant throughout the course of construction creates other challenges and new market tax credits uh, as we have set up. So um, we secured the services of Hope Community Capital, which is a, a group out of Madison that has worked with YMCAs and other nonprofits to navigate new market tax credits to make sure we get the most bang for our buck and benefit directly back to our uh, our community. So um, that's in essence uh, in that. But it wasn't possible if we weren't able to have the leverage equity by the time we need to close in order to receive the new market tax credits. So all of this is a puzzle that the timing had to work together very well in order for it to be launched uh, and for us to break ground by July. Wow, wonderful. Thank you for that. I mean, what hard work to, that, to bring all of this together. Like you said, it's like a puzzle um, and it takes a lot of relationships and a lot of commitment and trust. Um, does anyone have any questions about that before we um, start talking about phase two and what is what maybe the future beyond this first um, this first phase of the project, which will come um, in the next couple of years? OK, looks like we've got one here. Oh, Jessica just um, Jessica just shared that Ryan comment more on this, but I think it's important to note that it also is included in the facilities grant, the um, distressed community. Mm -hmm. And J Jessica, do you want to just jump off mute and, and talk a little bit about what you're saying here? Okay, well, Jessica's got a really great little write up here that um, if you want to read that about some of the activities and things that were included in the grants that she wrote um, to make sure that the project was realized. Um, but yeah, let's talk unless there's any other questions. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so yeah, let's start talking about phase two, um, which is, I think the thing that um, Lady, you say the most often thing that people want is what? The pool. It's first thing oh, out of everybody's pool. mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Ryan, what what would it actually cost to realize um, an aquatic center? And tell us a little bit about what we're what we're looking at here. Yeah, you know, in 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 the easiest way, uh, pool is about seven hundred dollars a square foot to construct. Uh, so if you look in a facility, it's got one, you know, one foot square tiles, and that's $700 in every step you take uh, to create it. So um, a typical YMCA is around eight to 12,000 square feet. So if we use that average of 10,000 and $700 a square foot, we're looking at $7 million uh, for the construction of an aquatic center. Sure, it could be cheaper if we have some design pieces, it could be much more expensive as we look at it. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's what it costs to get a pool built within a community, regardless of where you are. So um, the picture that you have is this is another YMCA rendering of a, of a pool um, in Beloit, actually Beloit, Wisconsin, that Zimmerman Architecture uh, had designed. Uh, Zimmerman is the architect on record for our Washera Community uh, YMCA. So using a concept that they have uh, in a pool that they have designed previously. So, um, you know, that upfront cost is a heavy lift. It's an extremely heavy lift. And I would say when Kyle Laney and I started this discussion, the pool was always part of it, but I don't think any of us thought it was even remotely possible. Well, probably <laughs> me, Sora. I think Laney has always had this hope that this is driven and, <laughs> and Kyle is right alongside there, you know, and, and uh, as we look at this and what we've seen is phase one is created opportunity um, in that. And, and to be honest, we really have not went out in a large public campaign. We've been very lucky in the way that our capital stack has come across in phase one, that potentially we could leverage some of that in um, giving to look at phase two. So, but I don't wanna steal any thunder on what that next piece sounds like. Right. But but when you talk about that $7 million price tag, you're really talking about something like what Beloit has, which I can see a mom and her kids, um, you know, in a very 
very shallow area. I can see it um, accessible um, uh, for wheelchairs and um, elderly or even um, you know someone who might have physical challenges being able to get in the water, um, some recreation, but then also, but also probably lap pool in there as well. So that that's really what we're talking about, this this level of pool, which um, is that correct? Yeah, you know, it would be something with some water features that can engage uh, youth of all ages. It would have a space for, um, you know, water exercise class for seniors. It would have lap swimming uh, potentials for that lifelong learning. Whether or not it has a slide or not, those are all things that come down to some funding. You know, what's possible with the funding mm -hmm. that is available, um, you know, because uh, it, it could be a 25,000 square foot natatorium. Uh, but we have to be realistic on what what the opportunity and, and potential exists. You know, one and timing the, too, right? Like, yeah. so it's $7 million now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we don't raise the funds for, you know, five years, then what will it be then? It's kind of the question too. But right now, yeah, that's what it, that's what it is. Thanks, Lainey. And I think another point that you have often made in, in the conversations that I hear you having with others is, which surprised me on one hand. And then when I thought about it, I guess like, oh, that would be true is the idea that, you know, Washera County is home to so many lakes, um, but there's not a lot of public access and we don't have a lot, we don't have actually space for kids to learn how to swim anymore. Like, you know, like we did growing up. And, um, and so it really becomes more than just and a place to recreate with your family or to have, you know, swimming lessons, you know, that swimming lessons component is really important in a community like this. So a lot of my kids friends don't know how to swim, which is mind boggling to me with this many lakes around. But yeah, it's it's a life saving skill, literally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about the Aquatic Center. Um, Lady, do you want to talk a little bit more about the vision on the endowment for phase two? Yeah, so it, it costs $7 million to build the pool, but a pool is also extremely expensive to operate, which I think gets forgotten a lot of the time, but it's, you know, probably a quarter million dollars a year to actually operate pool. And you can't raise membership prices enough to pay for that because then you wouldn't be able to afford a membership, right? So the idea is you have an endowment fund, which is just a fund set aside where you never touch the principal. It just kicks off interest. So you you work off the interest. So our goal is to get a million dollar endowment, which is probably what every year does that kick off? Yeah, 4%. Yep. Yep. So, 40, so yeah, so that just helps supplement the expenses of running the pool. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks for that. It's very, it's very forward thinking to think about the future while you're while you're planning for the for the immediate. Um, so Jennifer's had a couple of questions that I've been actually saving Jennifer because I thought they were perfect for this phase of the conversation. But she wants to know what can people do to get involved. Um, she also makes the point that so many people drive outside of the community for pool resources, and it's very exciting. So um, let's let's turn it over to. Um, talking about what does phase two look like? Um, and Ryan, you wanna start us off by giving us a sense again, we, you know, you talked about the the why agreeing, or the Stevens Point why agreeing to charter this, but the pool sort of that, that it becomes a, a separate, this isn't something that you're just gonna take on. You wanna talk a little bit about that and what the why board needs to see to realize a pool or phase yeah. two? Yeah, you know, when we look at phase one, phase one is a pretty simple math equation in the beginning. And when we get to that point, phase two in the pool creates a whole nother route. Um, you know, whether it's short term fundraising in order to realize it, whether it's long term, you know, we have to move forward with phase one of the project now based on some of the grant requirements and some of those pieces uh, happening in there. What we look at is we know that there's a lot of desire for the pool. And what we, as we move forward is, is there support? Is there support to make it happen? Is there support long-term to sustain? And is there support to make sure that this is really a generational uh, uh, um, 
opportunity that's in the community. So it's really our asking the Washera County community to say, come alongside with us, go ahead and let's make this happen. We were, we are more than willing to be able to operate and give you the opportunities and the experiences in an aquatic center would happen. Can we see the support that is necessary for this both now and in the future to be successful? Thanks, Ryan. So Lainey, Kyle, should we talk about the friends group? What does it mean to like to to and what is our invitation to come alongside the why? What does this look like? Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so um we um looking at really uh, we're creating a fund at at the community foundation that would um that we would house the funds at so that we can kind of simultaneously while phase one is being built, we can start getting the word out in in starting to gain momentum. So we were we were able to go tour um, a rural Y down in Iowa, Washington County, Iowa, that just went through this. Um, they just they built a similar similarly sized kind of thirty thousand square foot Y, kind of that Y light in a rural what would fit in a rural community and. Um, they finished that in 2020, and now here in, in 2024, as it comes to an end, they're just finishing their pool. So it took them several years to, to raise the funds for the pool. So uh, the it's a similar, you know, the county's about 22,000, we're about 24,000, you know, it's a very, very similar. So we're kind of taking that same approach. Um, so we'll be starting um, fundraising for specifically for the, the, the pool portion of it. Um, looking to have people to go have conversations to help um, participate in in fundraising events, uh, meeting with different groups, um, um, you know, hosting sessions at probably the local libraries, and so it'll take shape once the Y is open in in you know in uh, late summer of 26, right? So what that path will exactly look like, we're gotta we gotta start somewhere, right? Um, to do nothing right now when everyone wants to see it happen, even though we have our plates full, right, with phase one mm -hmm. and making sure we're successful on that, we are going to kind of try to, to, you know, stand up this team and continue to have those funds, but it will kind of run in tandem with the phase one um, one project. So would love people to, to get involved. And a lot of it is just, you know, having the having the conversations with businesses and your employers or, or different, you know, it's one of those things where it's tricky, right? With philanthropy and you, you look at how incredibly expensive a pool is. And when you think about it, when you're a kid or you're a parent, right, you do that weekend at the Dells or you go up to the Tundra Lodge in Green Bay, right? And you spend four or 500 plus bucks, uh, maybe a thousand. And what, why did you do that? Yeah, right. It was the pool. But the idea of writing a five hundred dollar check for your community pool seems overwhelming, right? But we but we do it. We do it. We you know. But pools are incredibly. They are a. They are an incredibly expensive feature that um, is going to take a lot of of involvement. And we'll continue to look for grants. And in um, Jessica, well, you know, is is on our team, and she she really. Um, does an awesome job of of keeping an eye on those opportunities and and so yeah we're looking for people to get involved and help us um, help us see if we can because we will we will have to find a way right uh, the the Washera community will have to find a way to fund that right the the why I think yes the why is a large uh, global organization but they don't you know they're not they're not fundraising in in at national level trying to donate funds to a small rural community right we we the community have to have to raise those funds for for our community and but we there are there are opportunities out there right there are foundations and there are grants that that w will help us so it won't it won't just be private citizens. And we know it's going to be probably a couple year process, right? Like the the Iowa Y that we looked at, it was a few end of year gifts. It was a few legacy gifts, um, you know, in memory of someone else. It, it, it takes a few years to kind of build up the funds needed. Yeah, they only had one, uh, unlike a lot of the Y's that we saw, you know, the Boys and Girls Club and the the Wisconsin Rapids Y, you know, they had a few really large donors. And the only the only 
the only large, so the 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 Washington County Y that we looked at, their their pool was 8.2 million, but it was it was two pools of a, a warm water pool and then the the swim team pool. Um, and they only had one million plus dollar donor, which was actually they had a three and a half million dollar gift from a local community. Um, so we 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 saw that their donor board was just it was huge, right? It had a ton of people on and they were they were the smaller gifts. They weren't, you know, they they certainly had uh, in the half million to a million dollar range. They they did have they did have gifts there. But we but those that makes the that makes the journey a little longer, right? Than just simply being able to find a few large gifts that can can seal the deal, which we were blessed to be able to do in in phase one. So, yep. Yep, absolutely. And I would just say the idea of the friends group, we've got lots of examples of that working really well. Um, I'll just use the Friends of Emerson Park that realized the Saramar Park, you know, they did all of that fundraising as a, just a community group alongside the city of Stevens Point and that park, you know, was realized. And we've got a number of projects like that. There's, there's a number of questions around um, looking for donations um, end of year. Um, you know, if, if you have those, I would encourage you to just email foundation that you are interested in either donating or learning more about the friends group. And we will, um, we will be back in touch as we get that fund set up. Um, what I would what I would also just point out is that this is now starting with a new phase, correct? Like phase one had all that um, that pre-work done. You know, likely this group wants to do some pre-work on like learning if the if if the funding is there, right? Similar to what we did with phase one. So there'll be some steps along the way, which is why, you know, when Lainey talks about a couple of years, a few years, um, um, the, the, those are all realities that the friends group likely wants to consider as well. So, um, but don't hesitate to send an email and we'll make sure that we can help you with um, with any end of your gift that is important to you. Um, all right, any final any final thoughts or comments, Kyle, Lainey, Ryan, that you want to share before we before we um, say goodbye to everybody here? No, we're just really excited. We're we're excited that the Y is on this journey with us. We're excited and thankful to Jenny and your team. So yeah, we're just excited. Yep, it's going to be awesome. Awesome. I, you know, I'm I'm appreciative when you look at the impact that Kyle and Lainey want to make, and and um, just that's true philanthropy at heart. Um, it, it's about making a difference and uh, and changing the direct trajectory of a community. And just greatly appreciative that uh, we have the opportunity to walk alongside this, and uh, really excited for what it's going to do for Washer County. It's going to be a game changer. So, um, pretty excited. Awesome. Well, thank you all. This is really, really exciting. Um, uh, just in case, I don't want you to miss before we say goodbye here that Mary Krause, Ryan, Kyle, and Lainey, you're a blessing to this community. Thank you. Um, well, thank you all for joining us today. A couple of more things to look forward to. We are in the middle of Community Foundation Week, which is why we hosted this special community lunch hour in the middle of the week. Um, we're doing a nonprofit meetup. If you're interested um, uh, here in Stevens Point, feel free to join us. Just drop in November 20th here at the Community Foundation. And then December 3rd is Giving Tuesday. And you should likely be able to be hearing a live inter or an interview around this uh, project on the bug. So um, some more to come there. And, and some of that and we'll also be sharing this recording and a blog that you can also share with your friends with some links to giving and all of that good stuff. So thanks for joining us. And we hope you have a, have a great rest of your day.